Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's coffee chat. Mm. Well, today is one of my favorite days. It's cookbook review day, and today I'm going to be reviewing this one. Oh, She Glows Every Day by Angela Lydon, one of the top vegan bloggers and cookbook writers. But before I get into today's review, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here many times, welcome back. Today, what? Not today, but hey, every day that I do a video, which is once a week, I share with you some of my 24 years of nutrition experience, casually over a cup of coffee. I share with you what you need to know in order to have healthy eating habits that actually stick. So I dig into the nutrition science, the psychology of why we make our food choices, as well as the behavior change science so that you can create habits that actually stick. I also get into the practical stuff, such as food products in the store that I'm seeing and loving and cookbook reviews, because hey, we all need recipes. And I know that you've been loving the cookbook reviews as well. And so this has become one of my favorite, well, really my favorite topics, my monthly cookbook reviews. So if you want to get in on the action and get all of this information so that you can have the best eating habits that actually stick, click the subscribe button below and the little notification bell so that you never miss a video. Okay, so this cookbook, as you can see, I have been cooking up a storm, really putting it to the test so that I can give you the real review for this cookbook. Why did I choose this cookbook? Well, it was by request, but also because the most, the most common questions I am getting from people are how to become vegan. Maybe you watched Game Changers or other things have inspired you to become vegan or just be, eat more plant-based meals. Include more plant-based meals for yourself, for your family, and you're wondering, hey, what the heck do I make then? Because eating plant-based meals, going vegan, isn't just about what you don't eat, it's also about what you do eat. And so we need some new recipes for that. Or maybe you've been plant-based, vegetarian, vegan for a long time, and you're just kind of stuck in a rut. So hey, some new recipes, some new ideas are always a great one. So let's get into this cookbook. It, first, I want to let you know that even if some people in your household are eh, not really on board with the plant-based thing, have them take a browse through this cookbook. There are beautiful photos for each recipe. Really talented food photography going on here that make these recipes so beautiful. And I'm just turning to random pages here and sharing with you what I find. Beautiful. Also, the names of the recipes, so, so, so good. So good. They totally kind of draw you in and be like, ooh, I want that. So again, great cookbook to have out if you're trying to engage people in your household into this idea of some vegan meals. Now, this cookbook is the most recent one from Angela Lydon, and she wrote it after she had her first child and was experiencing the reality of being a now busy mama. And so she designed it to be a little more prep friendly, a little more friendly for busy parents on the go. So that was her intention. And it's organized as follows. There's smoothie and smoothie bowls, breakfast, snacks, salads, sides and soups, entrees, cookies and bars, desserts, and homemade staples. And she said there's a hundred recipes in here. Although when I'm looking through it, I realize a number of the recipes, you can use them on their own. So yes, they are technically a separate recipe, but many of them are actually components of other dishes. So, you know, I'm not going to split hairs about whether there's truly a hundred recipes or whether she's put kind of one complicated recipe, broken it down into a couple different pages, but there are a book full of recipe ideas. So we're not going to split hairs there, but let's get into a review of the different recipes that I tried. Now, I only did try one smoothie or smoothie bowl because I did find that they are quite heavily skewed to the kind of carby and sugary uh, 
balance really and hey that's fine if you've got little ones or maybe you're in your 20s or you do a ton of cardio type exercise like maybe you're training for a marathon then you know you can handle that many carbs for like a breakfast or a snack but for those of us who are 40 plus are active but we also have a desk job it's going to be a lot of a lot of carbs for you and that's kind of a and throughout quite a bit of the book, I was noticing that. So, you know, take heed in what you're choosing if, if like me, you're kind of 40 plus and need to be, you know, decreasing the carbohydrate load. And so the smoothie bowl that I chose where it's the Chocolate Dreams Protein Smoothie Bowl. Beautiful looking. And yeah, it was tasty. Was I, I had it for breakfast and I was hungry again quite quickly afterwards, which is something I find happens with a lot of smoothies and smoothie bowls for me. And there is a lot of natural sugars in here. So again, quite carb heavy. It's not something I'm going to be doing on a regular basis, but tasty nonetheless. Then I moved into something that she called in the breakfast, although really I would count more of a, a treat or a snack. But she did include a recipe for a chia seed jam. And I love this concept. I love the chia seed kind of jam. And I'm using the little finger things for jam because using the chias, it's not a true, true jam. But hey, we're using it instead of jam because using the chia seeds makes your concoction gel. And so you don't have to use as much sugar. So I love this idea of the chia seed jams and super excited that she included a recipe for this. I don't know where the concept came from, but it seems to have exploded and it's all over the place now. And I'm super glad that she included a recipe for it in here because it's a definitely a good technique if you have jam lovers in your house and you are trying to reduce the sugar. So the berry seed jam here, great, great recipe. And then she used it. This is an example of how there's like multiple recipes, but they kind of come together. She used it for the strawberry oat crumble bars. And I made these. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I am not a talented baker. I'm a good cook. I'm not a talented baker. So if I'm baking something, it needs to be pretty foolproof. And I did find that these bars were quite foolproof. There are a number of steps. So it's not a quick recipe to create, but it is quite simple. And what I did find with them is that they are a touch soft. So I found that the best use for them was to keep them in the freezer and then to pull them out. Say you're gonna pack them for an afternoon snack in a packed lunch. Pull them out that morning and put them in that lunch and then they'll defrost in time for that, but they'll still be more firm. Where if you keep them at room temperature, uh, like you bake a batch, often when I bake a batch of something, I'll put some in the freezer, keep some at room temperature that I'll eat over the next couple days. I did find that they became quite soft and kind of fell apart. So they're better when they're still more, more new, more new from the freezer, but delicious recipe. And if you're willing to do the number of steps involved, a simple technique. Here was the next breakfast I tried, overnight hot oatmeal power bowl, which was fantastic. And you know, it has happened a couple of times, which was quite amusing for me in the cookbook in that this is my overnight oat recipe that she just warms up the next day with some extra banana happening in it. And it was funny because with the name, with the beautiful photo, I didn't even recognize <laughs> the same technique. And so she does a great job. That's what I was saying. If you have some people who aren't super on board with this vegetarian, vegan, healthy kick that you're moving them towards, this is a great book for them to browse. But yeah, great breakfast idea. This is the type of an idea that is going to stick with you longer. Now, again, there's a full banana in here, plus the extra sweeteners and fruit that she recommends adding. So if you are 40 plus, I would either cut back on the banana or not add some of the other sweeteners um, on top, but a great choice. All those nuts and chia seeds and things in there are going to keep you full for quite a while. Okay, moving on. We're moving into the snacks and the sides. I tried her roasted garlic and sun-dried tomato hummus. 
I'm a fan of hummus. I'm a fan of roasted garlic and sun-dried tomatoes. So I thought that was a really nice twist on a hummus. I honestly never thought of putting roasted garlic in there, but it kind of mellows it out. And so it's not quite as like fire breathing <laughs> garlic breath afterwards. And I quite liked that. So nice twist. Good job on the, on the hummus. Here's one of the most successful recipes in here. And this one goes against what I was noticing a number of the recipes being carb heavy. On the counterpart, this one is her endurance crackers. I will definitely be making these again because they make like a crunchy, wafery type of cracker that you can dip in say, a sun-dried tomato and roasted garlic hummus, but it's made completely out of seeds. So it's going to be higher in protein, higher in healthy fat and way lower in the carbs than like a cracker or a flatbread. So this is definitely going to be in my rotation, definitely going to be a staple in my house. Beautiful. And again, it's baked, but it's super easy to do. So wonderful. You do need to spend a little bit of time. There's a couple of steps. You let things sit for a bit. And I did notice that as kind of a theme again throughout the recipes that a number of the recipes do require you to do some advanced steps. So this is a great cookbook for you if you have your meal prep game totally down pat. But you do need to be rocking your meal prep game for this cookbook because a lot of the things involve, you know, soaking something the night before or prepping something and letting it sit for a while before you then move on with the next step. And so if you're just like, okay, I'm hungry, I'm gonna make something for dinner, what am I gonna do? This is not the best cookbook for that. But if you have your meal prep game on, you know, 100% where you're taking a day and you're looking at what you're going to make, what you've got going on this week, what you're going to make each week, how to prepare that ahead of time, this is great. Okay, so yes, the endurance seed crackers, the endurance crackers, big hit, definitely going to be making them again. Love it. Love it. Moving on to the Thai crunch salad. Again, look at that food photography, right? Beautiful. This involves some tofu and a homemade dressing. The homemade dressing is delicious. I love kind of a Thai inspired nut uh, dressing. Beautiful, lots of ginger in there, really refreshing and hearty type of dressing. Um, and again, she's using a tofu that is another recipe where that's a great thing that she does have in here, some great recipes involving tofu. So if you are new to using tofu or you've tried it and it hasn't worked out very great, this is a great book because it teaches some of those foundational techniques for how to handle tofu, which if you've never done it before, it is a totally new thing and you do need to have different techniques for it that are different than if you're cooking meat. So great, great recipe here. Here's another example, stuffed avocado salad. Oh, right, how good does that look? Amazing. And as I was making this one and making the dressing, I was like, huh, wait a minute, this looks awfully familiar. <laughs> and it's totally the same, or like 99% the same salad as my black bean rice and corn salad that I have in my own cookbook but because her food photography is so beautiful and her titles are so amazing, I didn't even recognize it. So I have to give kudos where kudos are due and her food photography, her names of her recipes, totally rock, great job. So yes, I was excited to eat this and yes, it was delicious. I mean, I already have a recipe for something like this and I didn't even recognize it. Okay, oh, the next recipe, this was my favorite recipe in the whole book delicious definitely going to be making this on the regular and it's a curried chickpea salad like a salad sandwich oh my goodness i ate this as a sandwich i ate this just on its own as a snack delicious 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 if you loved those that kind of like a curried chicken salad sandwich those kind of flavor profiles but you're looking for plant-based something or you are plant-based and you're just looking for like a different flavor profile for your same old like nuts and seeds and and beans and lentils this recipe hands down delicious and i ate this in the middle of winter and this is the type of 
dish that I'm going to be craving and going to be eating all summer long. So I'm really excited about this recipe. Thank you, Angela, for this one. Next one is another beautiful recipe for lentils. So again, I'm a big fan of pulses, our lentils, our beans, our chickpeas, and she handles them so well. The best marinated lentils. Awesome. And again, I ate this warm. I ate this cold in as a snack. I ate this cold as a part of lunch. Great recipe. And it makes quite a big one. And so it is useful for packed meals later, like all week long. The next side dish, roasted Brussels sprouts and coconut bacon. This recipe wasn't to my taste buds. It's not a weird recipe, it's not a fail, it's just, you know, wasn't for me. So yeah, interesting technique with do it using the coconut for making like a spicy smoky flavor to it, but yeah, I just, it wasn't for me. Okay. Italian, uh, marinated Italian tofu. Again, a delicious handling of tofu. Thumbs up from me. A real strength. Tofu, beans, and lentils of hers. The next recipe, this is the one recipe that I think is a total flop. It's the metabolism revving spicy cabbage soup. And whether it revs the metabolism or not, we're not going to go down there. But as far as a recipe goes, you know, she talks about, it opens with cabbage isn't particularly high on my veggie excitement totem pole. And that's kind of what this recipe tasted like. This recipe tasted like a recipe, a dish for someone who has to eat cabbage and doesn't want to eat cabbage. It does not make cabbage sing. And I love cabbage. I mean, this has cabbage, this has red lentils. A lot of my favorite foods are in here. This recipe, flop, don't make it. Next one though, the next soup, definitely make. It's delicious, creamy Thai carrot sweet potato soup. Yum, yum, yum. This is a silky, luscious, warming with all the ginger and the warm temperature and the carrots and the sweet potatoes. This is exactly what I want to eat on a cold, rainy, yucky winter night. I will be making this next winter when the season does a downturn, you know, November. <laughs> Those of us living here on the West Coast, we know what I mean when I mean November. This is totally a November soup. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be making this one. The other one that I tried, the other soup stew that I tried from her, again, really big success, golden French lentil stew. This was delicious. It's got cashews uh, pureed in the background, not that you taste them, but it just gives a lusciousness to it and a richness to it. Um, I made this one for my sweetheart. He thought it was amazing. So yes, this one's a hit. I will be making this next winter, fall and winter as well. Kind of a stick to your ribs type of, of dish, like my, my mom or my grandma would have said. The next one, getting into some pastas, you know, I love a pasta, is their mac, is her mac and peas. Now that's always a classic combination, so I wanted to give it a try. And it uses, again, one of her other recipes from uh, the, the back per section, which is an all-purpose cheese sauce which totally intrigued me. How do you make a cheese sauce when you're vegan? Uh, so I had to give that a try for you. And yeah, it's a delicious sauce. Now I would say that I understand why she calls it a cheese sauce because it does turn orange and it has like a gooeyness to it and it has some umami from the uh, nutritional yeast, similar to like a cheese has, but you're not going to fool someone who eats dairy thinking that this is cheese. So just don't go in with that expectation of like, oh, I'm going to swap out cheese and no one's going to know. No, nope, people are going to know. But is it delicious? Yes. Very successful if you want to dip some chips in it. And as well for this mac and peas, <laughs> mac and cheese, non-cheese uh, dish. Successful, totally worthwhile. Just don't have that total expectation of fooling people that it's cheese. Okay. Now I lost my spot a little bit. Next one, comforting red lentil and chickpea curry. 
It's everything that it promises. It's a delicious curry. It's comforting. Serve it with a little bit of rice or keep it lower carb, lower glycemic index, and just have it with some veggies. Beautiful. Next one, again, love my pasta, so I got to try some pastas. Sun-dried tomato, toma sun tomato pasta. Again, she's got, which one, cashews pureed in there to provide a creaminess. I'm a sucker for a creamy pasta, and I love these different techniques for using nuts and seeds as and pureeing them so that you get that creamy mouthfeel. You get that lusciousness, but without the cream. So you're getting nuts and seeds, all the beautiful health benefits from them, but in a, a creamy pasta experience. And so, yeah, this was successful. I love a, a sun-dried tomato, I already mentioned that. So this was successful. I first learned about this technique from Carlene Karst's cookbook. She has some beautiful recipes in there. And I reviewed that uh, this kitchen is made for dancing. And so I'll include a link in the box below for that cookbook review, if that's of interest to you. But yeah, love this technique. So glad she included one in here. Now we're moving on to desserts or baking and desserts. Chewy molasses spelt cookies. Again, I'm not a baker. I made these, they worked out. So you know the recipe's easy for anyone and they're exactly what you want a ginger cookie to be. Delicious home run. If you're looking to have some sugar, it's worth having what I call intentional treats, right? You want things that are going to be bring you a lot of pleasure for that sugar. And this one, as a ginger cookie lover, totally did it for me. The next dessert, secret ingredient chocolate pudding. This one I will make again, but I'm gonna change up the ingredients a little bit. Uh, uh, it was full, like sickly sweet, far too sweet. Uh, it was, I mean, it makes three servings and has a third of a cup of maple syrup. Like that is intense sweetness. And, but I could detect that I liked the flavors that were hiding underneath the sweetness. So I am going to make this again, but I'm going to cut that maple syrup way back. And I think I'm going to enjoy it because it, yes, it gave that creaminess, that texture that you want from a pudding, but it's vegan and it actually has um, sweet potatoes in there and again some uh, cashew butter um, happening or almond butter in there so there's a little bit of the healthy nuts and seeds going on there's some sweet potatoes happening in there so it's actually like a pretty healthy dessert but oh like my teeth still hurt thinking of how <laughs> sweet it is so I will make it again but with way less sugar um, next is the Thai almond butter sauce. This is the one from that beautiful salad with everything lined up in the rows there and the tofu. It's a delicious dressing. I will be making that again. And then the cheese sauce, which we already talked about. Spice mixes, that's super handy. I made the nine spice mix myself. Great to have on hand, love that idea. And then this was a great technique. So glad I tried it. I tried it for that chickpea, the curry chickpea um, sandwich filling. Homemade vegan mayo. I was skeptical. I was like, okay, I have to try this because this sounds like crazy. You use soy milk and you put it in the blender and suddenly you've got like ma vegan mayo. What's going on? It works and it's tasty. It misses, it's missing the tiniest little bit of the zing from mayo. Like I'm a mayo lover. And so I you know, noticed that was slightly missing, but still successful. I'm gonna do this again. I thought that was really cool technique. And definitely you use those few tablespoons for the curried chickpeas. And so, yeah, I'm gonna be using this to have for other dishes when I also make my curried chickpeas um, sandwich filling. So. Those are all the recipes that I tried. There's definitely other ones that I'm interested in trying um, as the weather is warming up and I'm having more salads as full meal salads. The Protein Power Rainbow Quinoa Salad. Definitely gonna be making that one. Uh, another one that interested me but I did not have time to make is the Loaded Sweet Potatoes. I mean, 
right? Sweet potatoes, black beans, guacamole, what's not to like? So I think this is gonna be right up my alley. I'll definitely be making that one. And then also the ultimate green taco wraps where she is using lentils and walnuts in like a taco, like a lettuce, a taco, a lettuce wrap, taco wrap. That sounds really interesting to me and I'm keen to try that. So that's my fulsome review of all those recipes, taking all of that experience together. What I found is that yes, beautiful photos, really clever titles. So it gets you excited about vegan cooking. A lot of the uh, recipes do involve multiple steps that often involve prepping things ahead of time, like the night before, or making different components, like making that cheese sauce, which involves cooking some vegetables and soaking the cashews, and then you make the cheese sauce, and then you would make the pasta. So some of them have quite a few steps involved. So definitely a cookbook for you if you have your meal prep game going on. And you're definitely going to need a blender and a food processor for this cookbook, which, you know, most of us have. So that's not really a big deal, but you definitely will want to have one. Um, so with all that being said, definitely a successful cookbook, definitely recommended from me, um, as long as you aren't kind of the fly by the seat of your pants kind of person. That's my review of this cookbook. I'm so excited for the cookbooks I have coming up. Thank you for the recommendations for future cookbooks for me to review. They've been coming in. If you have some ideas of cookbooks that you've been curious about, please include that in the description box below because I still need some more for this year. So please send me those ones. I want to be reviewing cookbooks that you're curious about. If you like today's video, let me know. Click the thumbs up button down below. And if you do want to continue the discussion around vegan eating, my next video or, or a video coming up next month, I'm still figuring out exactly which, which Thursday it'll come out on, but I will be doing my review of Game Ch the Game Changers documentary. So that's coming up. If you've been seen it yourself or you've been curious about adopting more plant-based eating, vegan lifestyle, definitely tune in for that. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will see you back here next Thursday morning.